That looks pretty nice. This is the biggest snowstorm I've ever gotten in my life. I never believed that I'd actually see the top of my snow stakes like this. And as you'll see by the end of this video, we got almost four feet of snow. Now we're currently running on generator power. You can see on the roof, we've got about 18 inches going. And I'm gonna take you guys on a little tour of my driveway. Now it's about seven o'clock at night. You can see the snow is still actively falling and we're getting around two inches per hour. The driveway doesn't look bad at all, but that's because I've been going out about every two hours trying to keep up with the snow. Now I could handle a lot more with the tractor that I use, but this stuff is not light at all. It's completely wet, it weighs a ton. And here's my other problem. The snow is sticking to everything. It's making all these trees bend over. Now during the summertime, I actually clipped a lot of these things, but my driveway is close to half a mile long and there's just no way I wanna take every single tree down. And if you're wondering why am I running all these lights when I'm on generator, that would be a good question. Now, first off, they're all LED. That's been a big goal of mine to replace all the bulbs and fixtures. They're not expensive, but they definitely reduce the amount of electricity you're using. And the main reason I'm running them here is so that I can actually find my way back to the house. Predator's still going. Now I've shown this generator in other videos. This is the Harbor Freight Predator, but this generator has been absolutely phenomenal. I still own a Honda, but the only reason I'm using this one is because it does put out an extra 2000 watts. Now that makes a really big difference, allows us to run the dryer, the stove. Now you don't need to run everything during an outage, but typically when I'm gonna lose power here, it's gonna be for two to three days or more. And at this point, we're still in the middle of the storm. And look out this window, this stuff is to the bottom of it. You can also get a good look at the amount of snow on my roof. Now many people will go ahead and rake their roofs and that certainly might be a good idea. The only reason I don't do it is because if all this snow just dumped down next to my house, this was almost gonna cause me more of a problem. I hear we're gonna be getting some warmer weather really soon and I don't want all this stuff just melting right against the house. This is what I'm using to do my driveway with. It's a 62 inch snow blower attached to a diesel Kubota. It's an LX2610 with a cab. Now it's got heat and AC and that makes all the difference but this is not really a huge piece of equipment. Part of the reason is I didn't want to spend too much money and I wanted to get something that was kind of small enough to get into tight places but could still do the driveway. But I found this machine has a huge problem. It does not work well with slush. In fact, it got jammed up so badly a few weeks ago with a storm, I actually had to call in a plow service. Now, a question I get asked all the time is why didn't I just buy a plow? Well, the reason is plows really require experience and you need space to get rid of the snow. With a snow blower, I can put the snow anywhere I want and you can be a little bit less experienced, but it will take you more time to use a snow blower. But look at the amount of snow in the back of my building here. It's actually up to the bagger height on the back of my tractor. Now back to the generator, one of the things that I always do to prepare is I keep a lot of gasoline on hand. Now this is a pain in the butt. I made a video about this a few years ago, but if you wanna be ready for storms, you have got to keep the fuel ready. Now at this point, I'm gonna fuel up the generator for the night and we're gonna to switch to the next morning through the magic of YouTube. And you can see that I woke up to over 34 inches of snow. Now the height of this varied around my yard. There were areas that were even over four feet. This is an insane amount of snow for less than two days. I also wanna keep an eye on the weather. I certainly was watching this one because the temperatures are gonna rise and all this stuff would turn to slush. Now I already knew this machine wasn't that good with the wet stuff, so I got out there early about six o'clock in the morning. Now take a look at my Kubota ATV. This thing is snowed in and you might be noticing Kubota, Kubota, Kubota. Well actually, I'm not sponsored by these guys at all. I've just been a big fan of their gear, but personally, I do not like that ATV at all. I'm gonna be putting that thing up for sale soon. It's a good machine, it's just way too loud. Now here's I'm clearing the driveway. You can see all these trees are kind of leaning over. It's kind of a cool sight, but this one falling down was gonna be a real problem. Now, I don't know if I've ever shown you guys this saw before. This is a Makita Arborist saw, and I'm doing every single thing wrong here. Not wearing a jacket, I have no protection at all. I love this saw because I can stick this thing right behind the seat in my tractor, and it's also fully powered by a battery. And you should be safer than I am, but it does do a good job no matter how you're gonna use it. Now here is a really cool feature on these Kubota tractors. You can lift the snowblower up and down. Now that might not seem like a big deal, but because this thing is only so tall, if you can't reach the top of a pile, you can just lift it up and kind of attack that pile from the top and then make passes until you get to the bottom. That's gonna allow you to use a much smaller snowblower and still clear huge amounts of snow. And finally, I'm near the end of the second day and things are looking a lot better outside. It's much clearer weather, but look at the amount of snow we've gotten. That's an outdoor set. You can see my little Weber grill and that thing is just covered. 
I don't really know where all the snow is gonna go. It's obviously gonna melt. If it melts too quick, it might end up flooding out my basement or causing some other damage. Years past, I used to run a snowblower around the perimeter of my house, but there is no way, even with my tractor, I just couldn't get that job done. And I'm gonna have to wait it out and hopefully it'll just melt a little bit slower. And I do wish it was some miracle tip that would save you a lot of time and aggravation, but during a snowstorm like this, this is really unprecedented. Almost 48 inches of snow. If you're wondering about my EcoFlows, I actually used them at the beginning of the storm because I wasn't sure how long the power was gonna be out. Out. I switched over to the internal inlet of my house and I made a video about that setup that I can link in the upper right, but I ran on them for about six hours and the batteries got down to about 30%, but I knew at that point the storm was gonna kick out the power for a lot longer, so I had to switch over to gas. And I am still getting settled in this house, but the best tip I can share is try to be prepared. If you run in a gas generator, you've got to keep a lot of gasoline on hand. Many people make the mistake and they think they're just gonna run out and get gas. And usually during a real bad storm, you might not even be able to leave your house. Now the silver lining is my kids were having a ball. They've never seen this much snow before. In fact, I haven't either. It's definitely a first experience. And hopefully this video might've been a little bit interesting and shared a few of the things that I do to stay prepared for storms that might be coming your way, even ones like this. And I'd love to hear your thoughts, any tips that you do or things that you want to share. Be sure to comment below.